In this lesson, we are going to be looking at November 2017, paper one, question five. It's a work energy question, but it involves um, quite a bit about working with the forces on the two objects. So I'm going to go through the question and then we will go through the answers. In the diagram below, a four kilogram block lying on a rough horizontal surface is connected to a six kilogram block by a light inextensible string passing over a light frictionless pulley. An inextensible string is just a string that is not stretchy. Initially, the blocks are held at rest. So two um, things are very important here. The surface is rough and the blocks are initially held at rest. So our four kilogram block is on the surface. There is friction, frictionless pulley, and then the six kilogram block is hanging down. In 5.1, you have to state the work energy theorem in words. Grade 12s, they love to ask this theorem, so please learn it very well. Then the blocks are released. When they are released, the six kilogram block falls through a vertical distance of 1,6 meters. If the six kilogram block falls through 1,6 meters, please bear in mind that the four kilogram block will move across the table a distance of 1,6 meters. So in 5.2, draw a labeled free body diagram for the six kilogram block. So here is my free body diagram for the six kilogram block on the right hand side. You can ignore the arrow with the direction for now. Um, we have two forces on the six kilogram block. We have the gravitational force pulling it down because it's not on a surface, it's just hanging there. And then we have the tension force going upwards. So those are the two forces acting on the six kilogram block. They did not ask for the free body diagram for the four kilogram block, but I drew it anyway. And I suggest that you always draw the free body diagram for all the objects, not just the one that is asked. You will most likely need to use uh, both free body diagrams. So I've done this one in gray, um, just because it wasn't asked, so it's rough. So the four kilogram is on a surface, so there's a normal force, there's a gravitational force, there's a tension in the string, and we have a frictional force. Remember that this tension is going to be equal to that tension because it's part of the same string. So in 5.3, calculate the work done by the gravitational force on the six kilogram block. So the gravitational force, the work done by the gravitational force, I've called W subscript G. Please make sure that your subscripts look like subscripts. Do not make them the same size as the rest of your symbols. Work due to the gravitational force is equal to this, the product of the gravitational force and the distance through which the object moves multiplied by cause of the angle this angle is the angle between the gravitational force and the displacement. The gravitational force is down, the displacement is down, so the angle between those two is zero. So cos of zero is one. If you substitute all your values, um, Fg is equal to m times g, so the mass is six, g is 9,8, the displacement is 1,6, and cos of zero is one. So the work done by the gravitational force is 94,08 joules. The other way that you could calculate work done by gravitational force is using this equation. You, some of the textbooks have it, or your teachers might give it to you. Work done by the gravitational force is equal to negative the change in potential energy. And the change in potential energy occurs because there's a change in height. So it's negative mg times your change in height. The final height is zero. The initial height was 1,6. So if you sub put your values in substitute, you also get 94,08. So you can use either of these two methods. Then 5.4, before we do 5.4, we're going to read through this paragraph. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the four kilogram block and the horizontal surface is 0, 0,4. Ignore the effects of air resistance. So I've written that in here, the coefficient of kinetic friction, the block is moving, so it's kinetic friction, is 0, 0,4. So they want you to use energy principles to calculate the speed of the 6 kilogram block when it falls through 1,6 meters while attached to the 4 kilogram block. So I've made a note here 
on the right hand side, the speed of the six kilogram block will equal the speed of the four kilogram block because they're attached to each other. We need to work with a four kilogram block as well as with the six kilogram block as we need to calculate the tension force initially. We need the tension force uh, so that we can use one of our work energy equations, one of our energy principle equations. And then in the black paragraph, we are going to use the work energy theorem in this answer as it includes the change in kinetic energy, therefore the change in velocity. We need to calculate the tension force and we will use this force equation if net, this should be a subscript, if net equals ma for each of the two objects using the forces that we've identified in the free body diagrams. So for the six kilogram block, we're going to say if net equals ma. The six kilogram block is, has this free body diagram with a tension and FG. So I've chosen down as positive. We're working with forces here. So I need to choose a direction as a positive direction. You don't have to take down as positive, but I chose to do that. It's just easier to think that positive is the direction of motion. So FG is in the positive direction, T is in the negative direction. So if net is made up of those two forces from the free body diagram. So if net is made up of FG minus T is equal to MA. If G is MG, so it's six times 9,8 because we're working with a six kilogram object minus the tension and that's equal to six times the acceleration. I have two unknowns here, tension and acceleration. So that is why I'm going to be working with both objects, the six kilogram and the four kilogram. I'm going to do simultaneous solving, I'm going to find the tension force and the acceleration. First the acceleration and then the tension force. I need the tension force for my work energy theorem because I need to have the work due to tension in my equation. So um, if I multiply Fg is m times g minus t is 6a, multiply out, um, simplify, you're going to get this equation. 58,8 minus t is 6a. So I'm going to stop there and now work with a four kilogram block. Again, if net equals MA for the four kilogram block. And the forces in the free body diagram for the four kilogram block that are going to make up if net is T to the right and FK frictional force to the left. The normal and FG do not, um, we do not consider them here. They cancel each other out anyway. So for the, because I took down for the six kilogram as positive, I must take to the right for the four kilogram as positive. So T is in the positive direction, if K is in the negative direction. So T minus if K is equal to MA, substitute all the values that you have. So I don't have if K, I have the masses for, now I'm going to go and calculate if K over here. We have this equation of the data sheet, if k is equal to mu k times the normal, the normal is equal to f times g, which is equal to mg. So if k is equal to mu k times the normal, which is equal to mu k f g, and f g is equal to m times g. So if we, if we substitute into this equation, mu k is 0, 0,4 the mass is four and G is 9,8. So there's my substitution. The frictional force for the four kilogram mass piece is 15,68. The four kilogram block has a friction of 15,68. So I'm going to take this friction and substitute it into this equation. So I stopped there, went and worked out the friction and now I'm substituting it in. So I'm going to make T the subject of the equation. So it's 4a plus 15,6a. So t is 4a plus 15,6a. I'm going to take this and substitute it in here because I stopped over there. So 58,8 minus t. Now remember t had a negative in front of it. So the whole value for t must be in a bracket with a negative in front. And that's equal to 6a. So simplifying that, you get your acceleration, 4,312 meters per second squared. I need tension force. 
So I'm going to take this acceleration. It's easiest to substitute it back into this equation. So multiply four with the value for A and add 15,68. Now we have our tension force. Now that we have the tension force, we can continue with the work energy theorem. When you use the work energy theorem, you can use the four kilogram block or you can use the six kilogram block. Please understand you do not have to use both. So I'm going to do the four kilogram block and then you can go over the six kilogram block on your own because I don't want to make the video too long. So the work due to the net force, if I go back to my four kilogram block up here, there are four forces, but the work due to the normal and the work due to the gravitational force will be zero because these two forces are 90 degrees to the direction of displacement, which is to the right. So if I had to substitute in the equation for work due to the normal force, it would be work due to the normal is normal force delta x cos of 90. And the cos of 90 is zero. So the work due to the normal is zero joules. And the same for the work due to the gravitational force will also be zero joules. So um, we are not going to be using those two in our work energy theorem equation. So back to our work energy theorem equation, W net is equal to delta EK. The work done by a net force on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. So the work done on the object is going to be work due to friction plus work due to the tension force. And that's equal to the change in kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. I've used the factorized version of that. Work due to friction is force of friction times by the displacement over which the block moves and cos of 180. Now, why 180? Because the block is moving to the right. The delta x is to the right, but friction is to the left. So therefore, it's cos of 180. Then the work due to tension is going to be tension force. You can say F subscript T, if you like, times delta X cos of zero. The tension force is to the right. The displacement is to the right. So therefore, it's cos of zero. And then your half M, your V final is what we want. And the initial velocity is zero because it's, the question said they are initially held at rest. So substitute your friction in, which we calculated up here. The displacement is 1,6. Cos of 180 is negative 1. The tension we have found, so you can see now why we needed to use both blocks with both the F net equal MA equations so that we could find the tension force. The tension force times the displacement times cos of 0, which is 1, is going to be equal to half mvf squared. The second term here, half m times zero squared is going to give you a zero. So I've left it out. When you simplify this, you get a final velocity of 3,71 meters per second.